Hi guys, it's Mark Zickby, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickby of Space Command. And it's a lovely sunny day after the rains here in Los Angeles. And I just spent three great days at the Gallifrey Convention, uh, bought down by the airport. We had a Space Command table and we screened the first hour of the pilot and people loved it. And we were really getting a lot of thumbs up and it was, uh, it was very nice to get. And then people would come by the table and compliment me about the Twilight Zone Companion or Far Beyond the Stars on Deep Space Nine or any of the other things I've been part of. And uh, so that was very gratifying. Uh, so, uh, but that's not what we're, here, what we're here to talk about today. Talk about other stuff soon. I'm going to talk about Alita Battle Angel. And uh, it was very funny because uh, on Valentine's Day, Elaine and I basically took in a Maharashtra Ali, whatever his name is, however it's pronounced, Triple Bill. So we've been watching True Detective with him in the lead on HBO and really enjoying it. Then we went and saw Green Book, which was very, very good with him and Viggo Mortensen. And then I went to Alita Battle Angel not realizing that he's in it. <laughs> he's one of the bad guys. So it was a lot of fun to see his versatility. He's quite, quite, quite talented. So. Um, but here's, here's the scoop on Alita Battle Angel. I'd seen the trailers. Now this is a film that James Cameron's been talking about making for many years, but now because he's so involved in doing the Avatar sequels, he, uh, he had uh, Robert Rodriguez direct it, and he and John Landau produced it, and he co-wrote it, and so forth. And it's based on a very famous manga, and all of that stuff. And so all the people who are into manga and anime, uh, they're, they're raving about it, saying this is the movie they've been waiting for. And I wasn't that thrilled to um, uh, go to it when I saw the trailers because the trailers looked like it was pretty much non-stop action. And it has a lot of action in it, but, but I was very surprised. I actually liked it a lot and, um, because it has characters you can care about. Now, if you ever saw the movie Big Eyes about these uh, very renowned paintings, or not renowned, but at least, uh, let us say, well-known paintings of the 60s that were called Keen paintings because they were painted by someone named Keen. It was actually his wife doing them secretly. There's a whole movie about that, very interesting, which also starred Christoph Waltz. And uh, it was these big-eyed girls, these waifish big-eyed girls. And uh, they were called Keen paintings, and they were very kitschy, but certainly memorable. And Alita, in her design, looks very much like a... Uh, an animated Keen painting with these gigantic oversized eyes. But that said, she's well written. The characters are well written. The story's well written. You care about her. You care about the characters that she cares about. It's a very interesting world with a lot of detail, very dystopic, but very Blade Runner-ish, but, but populated with a lot of details that make it very interesting to watch. Um, and I, I, I thought it was very, very good. It's not one of my favorite films, but it's certainly a very good film. And, um, and I can recommend it. It's uh, Christoph Waltz plays her adoptive father who finds her in a, in a garbage dump and, and brings her back to life. She's essentially a cyborg. She has a human brain, but a, uh, basically a robot body. And, um, and, and, she, and it turns out that she doesn't remember who she is, but it turns out that she's got fi you know, fighting skills, that she was basically a warrior. And, um, and it's got aspects of rollerball in it and lots of other movies, but... Um, but this is a very interesting thing, and this is why sometimes you'll get like a lower rating on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics and a higher rating from the audience, because right now I think uh, Alita's getting about 60% from the critics and about 93% from the audience. And I think there's a reason for this, which is the critics, I think, skew older. They tend to be older. So when they grew up, for instance, in my generation, I was the first TV generation. So when I grew up, we didn't have manga, we didn't have anime. I mean, there were things like Astro Boy on TV, and I was a fan of that, but I certainly didn't know the term anime. And, um, and, so, and there weren't, weren't video games. So I was watching television, going to the movies, reading books, remember, remember books, and comic books, and so forth. So the younger generation that has played with uh, video games all their lives, that's, that's, that's devoted to anime and manga, this is very much what they've been waiting for because it's not uh, Scarlett Johansson in Ghost in the Shell, which is I saw in French, oddly enough. That's another story, but it's uh, you know that was very very funky because I, I I went out, went out and actually bought the an, the animated film of Ghost in the Shell so I could have something to compare it to, and I very much liked the animated film. But, uh, but I agree, the live action one was just, you know, people saying, well, this is successful, let's, uh, let's make a Hollywood quote unquote version of it. Whereas uh, James Cameron clearly and Robert Rodriguez clearly are fans of this genre and fans of this storyline. And Cameron has always understood that you have to tell a story 
that um, connects the audience to the characters. There has to be a strong emotional through line. And often he does that within the context of a love story, and that can be a love story between a man and a woman, such as Titanic uh, or the first Terminator, or it can be a love story between a child and a parent. And so that's, uh, you know, so for instance, um, uh, Terminator 2 or Aliens is very much that. Uh, Newt becomes a, 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 a surrogate child to Ripley, who in the director's cut, we learn, has lost her own daughter because she was in animation for decades. And um, so, and in this case, they kind of split the difference because she has Christoph Waltz as sort of her adoptive father whom she cares about. And she also has a boyfriend, so it's sort of like young teen, first love, and the acting is very good, particularly by the actress who plays Alita, uh, and um, you know, you can just buy into it, and, you can see, and they're really setting it up for a sequel, you can tell that, and it, it, at some point I'll do a Mr. Sci-Fi about all the science fiction movies where they were set up for a sequel and then didn't, um, the movie tanked, and so they never did the sequel, such as The, uh, the Golden Compass, and, uh, but, but for now, what I can say is, now I've seen it in 2D, I'm going to go back and see it in 3D, I think it'll be really, really impressive in 3D, and um, but I would I would say go to it and enjoy it. And um, you know the, the challenge with science fiction is where you're drawn in, where you buy into it. Most science fiction films it's very rare that you'll find one that's totally fresh and it's something that you've never seen before. Um, usually they're riffing on other movies, and certainly Alita does in many, many ways. Uh, Blade Runner among them, of course, and. Um, but that said, it still it still manages to uh, to do what it needs to do and and do it well. So go off and see Alita, and then if you're if you like the the guy who's playing one of the villains, go uh, check out True Crime on HBO and uh, Green Book because you will be re well rewarded. So that's about it for now. But I think and one one last thing before I do go, um, what this what True Crime and Green Book and Alita all have in common is that people care about the stories they're telling. The actors care, the writers care, the directors care. Everyone is putting their best efforts out. And no one is just phoning it in or walking through it. And I think, so whether it's science fiction or drama or a, or a crime thriller or whatever, that's what just differentiates good work from bad. It isn't, it isn't an accident. And, um, and it was funny because with Space Command, uh, getting such tremendous positive response I really understand. It's, it's very nice when you put in the work and people recognize that you've done so and give you the, um, the props for that. I mean, on Space Command, we're now getting over 95% over positive responses. And uh, so if you want to see the first hour of the pilot, uh, I've posted it here on Mr. Sci-Fi. You can subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi. I'm posting about a week, one video per week or more. And, uh, and so that's about it for now, but again, it's a good time for science fiction, a good time for uh, really terrific actors being part of the talent pool. So uh, we'll talk again soon. In the near future, I'm going to be doing the history of science fiction film. I'm going to be talking about The Expanse and other, um, other things that people have been asking me to talk about. Uh, one person wants to know what I'm reading and watching that's not science fiction. So we'll get into some of that very, very soon. And uh, that's it. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye.